Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter and I am here with a card project for you today. I thought I would use this tandem bicycle stamp from Avery L. It's from the Let's Roll With It stamp set to create a really fun, kind of non-traditional wedding card. And I was inspired by this image here on Pinterest. It's a gold bicycle and I thought it would be super fun to emboss this tandem bike in some gold embossing powder. So that's what I'm going to do. I've mounted this stamp onto my compact stamp press and I'm going to prep the surface of my Nina Solar White cardstock with a little EK Success powder tool. Then I'll ink that up in some Versamark ink and I'm going to use the Hero Arts Ultra Fine Detail Embossing Powder in gold. So I'm just stamping that onto the lower third of this card and I'm letting a little bit of that image kind of hang over and then I'll coat that image with the Ultra Fine Detail Embossing Powder. Now, after I made this card, I realized that this um, stamp set might be a little hard to find. So I've linked the stamp set below to a couple of different places. And then I've also linked a die by Memory Box. That's also a tandem bicycle that I thought would be super fun to create this card with as well. So you have a couple of different options there linked in the YouTube description as well as over at my blog. So now I'm going to use this Avery L. This is Sea Glass Pigment Ink, and I'm going to do a little ink blending on this. And you can see I was kind of trying my hand at it on a piece of scratch Nina Solar White cardstock because I really wanted to get the feel of how this pigment ink would blend. I've never really tried ink blending with pigment inks before, but I've seen Laura Basson do it. Laura Basson, by the way, is an amazing ink blender. <laughs> Um, one day when I grow up, I'm going to be like Laura Basson. But for now, I'm just going to keep practicing my skills until I get it just right. So I'm using my blending tool and I'm just using the sea glass ink. And you can see I placed a little bit of post-it tape along the bottom so that I could keep the blue off the bottom because I'm going to actually blend some gray down there. So I'm just kind of blending this out and I'm kind of tapering it off over to the left. And because that little bike is embossed with some gold embossing powder it's kind of resisting it and at the end I'll take kind of a clean um, paper towel and just wipe off any of that excess ink that's sitting on top of that embossed bicycle and you can see that um, ink blending that I've done there and I have that nice clean line because I use that post-it tape along the bottom now I'm just moving this post-it tape up so that I can do the bottom part of this and I'm using the Avery L fog pigment ink to blend along the bottom here. Now when I was inking up my ink blending tool, I had some spots that were grabbing more ink than other. I don't know if my pigment pad is maybe a little, I don't know, uneven in the way that it's inked right now. Maybe I need to re-ink it. That's okay. I just kind of smeared it off. You see it on that scratch paper there and I fixed it and it's all good in the end. So I just blended that down and I made kind of the ink blending a little thicker along the line of the horizon that I created. Now it it needed some spots that were that needed to be blended out so I'm just taking the edge of this ink blending tool and I have a clean sponge on there and I'm just kind of inking these or blending this out and then I took the other side and blended out the other with the clean sponge and as Laura Basson says these pigment inks blend like butter. <laughs> Okay, I don't say it as good as she does, but if you guys haven't checked out her YouTube channel, you really need to. Now I am using these dies by Pretty Pink Posh. These are the Stitched Labels 1, I believe, and there's these adorable little shapes on there. So you see I have that little heart cut off and also that stitched banner and there's a couple other stitched labels in there too that are really cool. And I wanted to cut these hearts out, but I wanted them to have dimension and I didn't really want to have to put some foam tape behind them. So what I'm doing is I'm using this deco foil foam double-sided adhesive and I thought I would just cut off a piece of this and put it on the back of my pattern paper where I want to cut these hearts out from. So you can see I removed the backer from one side, mounted it onto my pattern paper and I'm just going to cut off the edge there where it overhangs so I don't get any sticky residue on my cutting plates. And then I have foam adhesive already on the back of my pattern paper. So when I run this really super tiny little heart die through, I'm not only getting the paper cut, but I'm cutting the foam adhesive that's on the back of there as well. 
Now I've left the backer on that so that when these come out, the hearts, you know, have the little backer on them. And before I place them down, I'm just going to peel that backer off and place them kind of above this little tandem bike. And I'm just making them kind of float above it like they're kind of trailing off. I just thought this was a super cute idea. In fact, the stamp set has a little heart stamp in there, but I wanted some dimension on these. And that foam adhesive, that double-sided deco foil foam adhesive, really worked well for cutting these tiny little die cuts, but having some foam dimension behind them. So I think this is going to be something that I do a lot of in the future. So now I'm just taking some pattern papers and I'm trimming them down. You saw me use that metallic cardstock. That's quickly becoming one of my favorites in my collection. That's from the, um, that's from a Tim Holtz pad. It's like a little six by six metallic paper pad. And then I'm going to use this little stitched banner shape here and cut out some different pattern papers as well. So I'm using that same pink and I'm using this gold as well. And then for the third banner, I'm just going to use this I Love You pattern paper. This is from the Maggie Holmes. I believe it's the Style Board collection. I don't, I can't recall right offhand, but I will have it linked below and as well as over at my blog. And I just thought this I Love You pattern paper really reinforced that kind of wedding theme, that love theme that I've got going on with the tandem bike and the little hearts. And the color, actually the colors worked out really well with what I was using too. So that never hurts as well. So I've got a few of these little stitched banner pieces. Now I could have cut these banners by hand and I often do that, but I really love the stitch detail that this die gives. And so I've created a few of those little banners. I've created a grouping. I'm going to adhere them to the top of this card front using a little bit of foam adhesive. This is just the regular 3M foam adhesive that I use quite a bit of. I like it because I can tear it down really easy. It just, it makes it easy because I just tear off a piece and I go. And once I've mounted that down, I'm going to trim off the edge where I have it kind of overhanging. And then I have the perfectly positioned little banners there. And after I trimmed that down, I had actually trimmed off the staple that I had put on with the tiny attacher. So I went back and just added another staple with my tiny attacher. I just thought it was a fun detail. Now for my sentiment, I am using this really cool stamp set from Tim Holtz. This is the hashtags greetings stamp set or hashtag stamp set. It's full of a bunch of different hashtags. There's tons of stamps on this one. And I just happen to be using the one that says hashtag together. And I'm inking it up in some versifying onyx black ink. And I'm going to stamp it right underneath the bicycle, kind of off over to the left. I just really felt like the card needed something a little bit more on the lower left hand corner. It just seemed to balance it out a little bit better. And I used my stamp press to press that down and I have that really cute little greeting there. My card base, for my card base, I'm using the Basil Taffy cardstock. I've cut it down to four and a quarter by 11 and I'm scoring it using my Teflon boulder. <laughs> it is not my Teflon boulder, it is my Teflon bone folder. I have worked a 12 hour shift today and let me tell you, I am bombed. So anyway, I scored that with my Teflon bone folder at the five and a half inch mark and I have my card base already now. I'm going to use these pattern papers that I've cut. I have a little bit more of this metallic gold cardstock. I've added a little bit of tape runner adhesive along the back of my card front. I like to just position pattern paper pieces behind my card front like this. I just feel like I get a little even edge and I can control how thick the edge is. Sometimes I only want a little bit of that pattern paper to show. So for me, putting the adhesive along the back of the card front and then positioning the pattern paper behind it works best, but you can see what works best for you. So now that I have those pieces down, I am going to have to kind of piece together some fun foam along the back of my card front. I did not have a piece that was large enough. I had ordered it, but it hadn't come yet, and it just so happens that it came later that day, so if I would have been patient, I could have just put one solid piece. But you can see here, I'm just adding a little bit of the Be Creative tape along the back of my card front, and then I'm going to put one like kind of medium sized piece of fun foam, and then I'm going to butt up a piece, a smaller piece of fun foam 
right against that to kind of create a solid piece. Hopefully that holds up. I think it will, but anyway, I have more fun film, so in the future I can just cut one large piece and put it behind there, but you see me piecing it together there. And I have the Be Creative tape on the fun foam as well, so I'm going to peel off the backer pieces and position that on my card front. Now, to complete my card, I wanted to add a little bit something more to these adorable dimensional hearts that I created. So I'm just adding a little Wink of Stella clear glitter brush marker on the top of all of those. And then I'm going to finish them off by adding some glossy accents over the top of all of these hearts. And I just love the way that these shimmer and shine and there's so much dimension because of that deco foil foam adhesive that I use behind them and I tell you this is probably the best way to add foam behind these tiny die cut pieces I think I'll be doing it a lot in the future so that completes my card for today as always you can get links to all the products used in this project over at my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com as well as in the description below at YouTube. And I really hope you've enjoyed this kind of non-traditional wedding card. Thanks for stopping by today. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you have a fabulous day.